Welcome to episode 174 of the Urology Coding and Reimbursement Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Painter, with my co-host, Mark Painter and Dr. Ray Painter. And today we want to welcome back uh, Dr. John Lynn. Uh, Dr. Lynn is a solo practitioner in Gilbert, Arizona, and is the moderator, one of the moderators, and the founder of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. And we want to uh, talk about and also a speaker, a, pres a presenter at the Urology Advanced Coding and Reimbursement Seminars, uh, the one that we just had in Las Vegas, and the one upcoming in New Orleans at the end of January. Today, we want to discuss the Urology Advanced Coding and Reimbursement Seminar in Las Vegas and how it went, our impressions, the takeaways, and uh, and what we all learned and want to share what happened there and the excitement that that everybody came out with and what what uh, our impressions were. So let's get started. Let's start with uh, the overall impressions of the Urology Advanced Coding and Reimbursement Seminar in Las Vegas. In, uh, that was in December 1st and 2nd of 2023. Uh, John, welcome. Thank you for joining us and great job in presenting. Uh, we we want to get your thoughts. How... What are your impressions of the seminar overall? So let me speak from someone who used to attend these seminars in the uh, sitting in the audience, and I've been attending these for over a decade now. You guys have been doing this for what twenty three years. It's so. What impresses me is that uh, PRS Network has been very open to new ideas. Several years ago, I don't, it's just something pretty small, but it has a big impact. I told you, Scott, about these things called catch boxes. These are throwable microphones. You can hurl these across the, the, the room and have the person asking questions get to the microphone right away, and you adopted it. And then I suggested last year, or actually this year, I suggested, hey, why don't you get your own wireless la lavalier microphones, headsets, so that Speakers don't, even the speakers who have ideas or, or information to share with the audience, we don't have to wait for the microphone. We just unmute ourselves and then we can get in on a conversation to share value, valuable information. That, that way the audience will, the attendees will get more impact per unit time, right? Higher yield. And you adopted that. So I'm always impressed with PRS Network's willingness to change to improve, to progress, so that the audience, the attendees, have the best experience possible. The downside of being so progressive is that we're providing even more information to the attendees, and it feels more, even more like drinking from a fire hose. So that, that, is, that is my impression. The first thing that I saw when I walked into the uh, conference room was that, oh my gosh, two wireless receivers, head-worn head microphone, transmitter packs, and you've got, what, eight transmitters, eight microphone packs ready to go. I was super impressed just walking walking in as I, uh, as I uh, entered the uh, conference room. Yeah, that was, that was a big improvement. It, it really did help as everybody was able to chime in at, at any given point. And uh, I think it, all, it helped not only add, the, add to the content, but... That did, did make things a lot more efficient. And the common, the, the thing that I always hear, right? At the, people, some people are afraid to raise their hands or speak on, on the microphone, but at the end of the meeting, I always get this, uh, so many people will come up and say, thank you so much for what you all do. This is greatly, greatly help, has greatly helped me in understanding the coding and billing process, revenue cycle management, how to do the service, and then collecting right away and collecting everything that the urologist deserves, that the APPs deserve. Also, I hear from the administrators who attend, they always say, I wish the doctors would attend. I wish my doctors could attend and hear what you all are saying because the, often the administrators, coders, billers, they get it. They see the big picture, but then it's the qualified health professionals, QHPs, those who hold an MPI, they, they're... MPA number is the one that goes out on the billing claim. Those are the folks who, if they understand the rules, it would make 
folks on the back end's lives a lot easier and the QHP would get their money much faster. So true. Mark, what are your impressions of, uh, of the seminar? Well, <clears throat> so a couple of things. So, um, so number one, you know, as we set up for all of these conferences, um, trying to design a flow <laughs> of how the information goes. You know, we take a lot of time trying to do that and, and we try and change it up a little bit um, to see if we can land on what's the best way. And I don't, I don't know that we finally figured out the best way to present all this information, but um, I do feel like we cover a lot of information in two days. Um, and I think there is, you know, the thing that I like is, you know, there's something for everybody in this and that's their focal point, but they are also exposed to some of the things that they may not see um, in their normal operational day-to-day uh, -day lives. Because, you know, that the, the process of getting paid for what you do is not just write it down and fight the insurance company. There's a, there's a lot to this, you know, that, that you want to try and do to get your, your operation into the most efficient operation possible. And I think that exposure um, and having everybody in the same room to, to ask those questions and to bring up their issues is important. I mean, it's a, a little bit of a double-edged sword, um, as we've seen. You know, sometimes we, as we get the the audience interaction up and running, and there was a lot of that. This was a great group, as far as asking questions and really the engagement overall. Um, but you know, the downside is sometimes we you know explore a topic maybe in too much detail for one person or a couple of people in the audience. Um, so it's you know it i but i really hope and i i think that the the overall scores and the feedback that we got really kind of bears that out that seeing the 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 turning over rocks <laughs> if you will in the practice everywhere it is is really important for everybody um and it does you know shed some light on maybe ways that they can they can improve what they're doing and to streamline what they're doing and and avoid some of the things that we we hear everybody complain about of you know burnout and all those other issues that that we're up against. Yeah, man, very true. Ray, what are your impressions? Looks like Ray is muted. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll just chime in real quick while he's uh, getting ready. Some of the best information comes from the audience. And one of the things that specifically I learned was that one particular group was actually charging for A4355 for irrigation tubing because they have negotiated with their managed care payer for that carve out. J7030, normal saline infusion. They, they carved that out and they were able to charge in addition to whatever whatever it is that they do, the underlying CPT code, they were able to charge something additional. And Mark mentioned asking for cost of living increases from your payers. And one of the attendees mentioned, look at the local CPI, consumer price index, and then adjust your rates according to that. So some of the stuff, yes, hearing from the audience sometimes may be distracting from the main topic of discussion, like say e &M, and now we're talking about cost of living in increases in CPI, but overall it improves potentially your knowledge and how you negotiate with your payers going forward. Now for the hospital employed urologist who was sitting at the front row on the left, <laughs> he, it, it may not pertain to him, but <laughs> right now, once he realizes, well, you know, the hospital employment situation may not be the best, and then now he's transitioning out, then he may recall, oh, yeah, there's something about negotiating contract about contracts at these meetings. So it may not be pertinent to you now, but in the future, it most likely will. Kind of like chronic care management that Mark is, is talking about. Kind of like telemedicine. Oh, my gosh, I can't 
prior to 2020, Mark has been saying telemedicine is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then 2020 just accelerated everything. I was so grateful that I had the knowledge and I was already looking into telemedicine because when 2020 happened, I was able to transition into telemedicine in no time and I was ready to go. So if you have the knowledge, if you have the base knowledge, if you have the base understanding or starting to get some of that information about what's forthcoming, you're going to be much more ready to go. And one of the ways to get that is through attending these seminars. Absolutely. Ray, what were your uh, impressions of the seminar? Well, John mentioned the fact that uh, PRS has always been willing to uh, uh, move with the flow and, and adopt new technologies, et cetera. But the one thing PRS has always maintained and I was, uh, as one that spends most of my time in the audience listening these days, since I've retired from actively traveling and speaking, I was impressed that uh, Mark, John, and the presenters have continued to really be sure that the information that we give is up to date and accurate. And, and Mark spends a lot of time studying all the different uh, databases that you need, not only the, the rules, but the NCII rules, uh, all of the LCDs and all of that, to be absolutely sure that the information is accurate. And also the seminar stresses the most important thing of all, and that's understanding the concepts of the rules. It's not good enough to know the rules. You have to understand the concepts. And I think the speakers, all of you did a great job of continuing down that path. Yep, that was, uh, that is so true. And uh, speaking of speakers, we had a debut of, uh, of uh, a new speaker, Marianne DeSoyce. And and Mark, do you want to share who Marianne is and what she presented? And then we can talk about uh, kind of the, how everybody received that presentation. So, yeah. So we had a, a couple of uh, shifts that, you know, at, at the last minute, we had uh, you know, Larry Kemp, who joins us frequently, was unable to attend this year. And Marianne, um, we were planning to to bring her. She's always participated in the last couple of years in helping us answer questions um, because Marianne is my director of operations in PRS managed services and and she really runs the revenue cycle operations um, through uh, for us here in Denver but we we actually bill for a number of different groups around the country so, She's got firsthand experience with a lot of the payers that are out there and some of the the day-to-day -day offerings. She's always been feeding me a lot of information, has been really helpful in what we do because, as everyone knows, there are the rules, and then there's the application and the twisting of the rules that goes on <laughs> by all these payers that are out there. And 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 it gives us that, that firsthand knowledge and firsthand insight. And so... She stepped in really well um, to walk through um, some of the pre-visit stuff, that which is a huge focus of the market today, um, in and and a and a shift that we've had to make um, in our RCM group. Where in the you know the beginning we we really put all of our expertise in the back end AR to try and work through denials. And, and because of all this pre-visit work, um, we've had to make shifts. We've actually put our biller coding AR folks much earlier in the process, checking claims before they go out the door and, and double checking that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's um, because the request for medical records and everything that is, is part of today's billing and coding environment um, and she did a great job of explaining those particular issues, as well as 
um, kind of that mop up clean up on the back end AR and 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 throughout the conversation interjected a great deal of information. So she did a great job um, overall and and the, the 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 reviews for her, the audience reviews were very good. Um, so it was it, it was well done um, uh, across the board and and I think, you know, has always and 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 for this conference was a little bit more upfront, but has always lended a great deal of color um, and context to all the information that we present. Mark, would you uh, add a little uh, depth to what you're talking about? How many docs are you billing for now, and how many states are are you working with different practices at different? Uh, uh, parts of the RCM, so they'll know exactly what knowledge Marianne and you bring to the table. Yeah, I wish I could give you the exact numbers. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> we've had a little bit of a growth spurt recently, and I'm not totally on top of everything, but um, a it, swag uh, will be just right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so right now, um, we have we work with groups in, I'm going to say, 20 different states around the country um, and uh, with, with with the day-to-day the -day RCM. Obviously, you know, with some of the other stuff that I do, I, I put my foot in, I put my foot in all 50 states in the last few years. And um, the, we have, I, I, I'm going to say we've got uh, 200 physicians around the country that we currently work with on their day-to-day -day operational billing and coding. All right. Well, just to uh, summarize, give a quick uh, summary of what the ratings were for the seminar, since uh, we, we Mark mentioned that briefly. Uh, I just want to give, on a, on a scale of one to five, the seminar got an overall rating of 4.7, and, and this was by 75% of the attendees we got responses from. Uh, John and Mark uh, got 4.9 ratings on their presentation, and Marianne got a 4.7 uh, rating. So overall, you know, 75 was 75% responding to the evaluation form. Uh, those were the ratings. So uh, we, we, and our mix of attendees, uh, we have about, you know, a third urologists or uh, APPs. So most of those are urologists, a third coders and billers, and a third coming from the admin side of things. So it it was really a mix of people, and yet they all found something in common when when they're at the seminar, and the rating shows that, that it, it really – caters to all different groups which is which is fascinating from uh the the presenting side of things john what was your uh takeaway did you hear anything about uh marianne's presentation that did you wanted to share yeah so i i personally have been trying to encourage her uh, since seeing meeting her and hearing her speak over the last couple of years as she's kind of in the periphery adding a color or additional information regarding the question that we're trying to answer. And she speaks from the trenches because she manages a bunch of folks who work directly with patients, who answers the thousands of calls that you all, the PRS network managed services deals with. So she has a lot of direct to consumer type of information. And she's always been able to add a lot of context to whatever question that we're trying to answer in the last couple of years. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if you could be one of the speakers? And this year, I encouraged her, and I actually had her on as a guest in the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group, and I would interview her. And throughout this process, I would give her some insights on how to do this public speaking thing, how to appear better on camera, more authoritative, credible, likable. And she, she really took it to heart, and she killed it on stage. She said, I was so nervous. I spoke with Marianne afterwards. She said, I was so nervous throughout the whole thing. I said, I could not tell. Her voice was so smooth and calm. So it was great. It, and, and many years ago, somebody said, you know, 
PRS network, you all, you've always had just a bunch of guys talking up there. Why don't you find a woman? <laughs> and we mm -hmm. did try, and I would encourage anyone who is listening to this podcast, if you, female, male, if you have an interest in being on stage, speaking at PRS, please contact Mark, Scott, Ray, then they'll try to hook you up. If you have valuable information to share, I'm sure we'll be more than willing to have you on stage. And uh, yeah, we welcome male, female, however you can present information, whoever you are. But anyway, I thought she did a great job. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah, we definitely welcome anybody and, and would love to hear from anybody that want, wants to share what they, what they, uh, any knowledge they have. And yeah, I agree. Marianne did a great job. I, matter of fact, I heard from uh, one attendee that said, you know, out of the years I've been attending this, I think she said she had attended the last three years. She said, it was great having Marianne there because I could really connect. And this was a, a administrator uh, or bill or code or someone in the, the other side of the, uh, the operations. And she said, it, I really connected and what you were able to uh, say from your point of view really resonated with me. And it was fantastic. So, so getting those different perspectives. So are very, are just so important because it's good for uh, the urologists out there, the QHPs to hear the perspective of the coder biller and admin side and vice versa. So that, that really, lends itself to being uh, and, and really not only lends itself to being uh, interesting and connecting able the different team members giving them a chance to connect to the material but also gives the team members a chance to see how the other team members perceive uh, the information so so let's talk a little bit about that why attending as a team is a good idea. Well, I think Ray, Mark, John, anything. So I, I think, I think one person attending, and, I, and we've always said this over the years, it feels like you're drinking from a high fire hose whenever you attend this, this meeting, because there's so much information. And just like in clinic, I tell my patients, whenever there's a family member who is speaking on your behalf, Whenever you have an advocate on your side, I don't care if you're in clinic or if you're in a hospital, you're gonna get better care. Likewise, when you attend these meetings, one person may miss something, but the other person in your group attending will pick that up. And then collaboratively, when you get together, you ask, oh, did you hear about that? Oh yeah, I, I was writing something down, I must've missed it. And you get the best and most information whenever you have most, more people, more than one person attending. And then the two people attending, one may be a qualified healthcare professional, like an APP or a physician, and the other could be in an administrative role. One person may not see the perspective of the other person, yet we present that in a meeting so that the two people working at different ends of the revenue cycle will be more empathetic to the other person. So the physician may learn to code or write down or document better, not just for clinical relevance, but also for billing relevance to make the back end people's jobs easier so that everyone benefits by shortening that revenue cycle. Mark Ray? Yeah, so I would agree. I, th I think the perspective of your job colors the information you filter in. Um, so um, that's, and I've seen that over the years. I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to grab what you, you know, what you know versus what you don't know relative to where you are. And so certainly having more than one perspective is important. Um, and, you know, we definitely also have groups where, two from the same group and two physicians from the same group come in and they can go back and forth and it actually helps them grab a few questions. So you're right, John. I mean, certainly as that information goes and as you're thinking about where you, where your next question is and what you want to know, um, you know, having somebody else still listening and picking up something from the audience or from, 
from one of the slides or some of the the information i think it's it's really important um and does help the the overall retention and takeaways um so i i thought that was i, I think that's a great suggestion and and we've gotten that feedback from a number of folks that they're really glad that they they brought the different perspectives to the to the uh, to the seminar ray uh, we've always talked about billing and coding being a team sport. It's just too detailed for any one person to be able to do it all. And we've had uh, groups that brought their entire team to the meeting. And, uh, you know, a number of physicians, there were coders and uh, administrators. And it was always uh, fun to see that in between the different talks, that group was sitting around talking about what they had picked up and how they're going to change things and how they're going to do different. And those groups had the best retention of what we we tried to convey of anyone. All right. When I know we're getting ready to wrap up pretty quick. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to to bring up was. Um, and was that was kind of fun for us to do this time through. And I think, you know, reasonably well received was our pitch from the podium. So, you know, we had um, several different vendors from a from a broad swath of of activities. So we had um, a, an EHR present. We had um, uh, we had various different new technologies that were out there and they got to talk a little bit about what their product was. And then we got to talk about the reimbursement um, coding and, and all the stuff that surrounded those new technologies as they come in. And urology has been very active um, or the, 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 the global urology. We've gotten a lot of new tech to treat patients and to deal with the support of of your the business of urology and it was it was really nice to hear from them and then be able to to talk about in detail um how that was was important to the practice and and how you can navigate through all the issues that surround new tech and and some of the new support mechanisms that are out there so i i enjoyed that as you know and i think that'll get better you know anytime you introduce anything it's always a Oh, I hope this works. So, but I I felt really good that that um, they've provided some good information to everyone there. And to circle back to what I mentioned at the very beginning about how progressive and innovative and how malleable, adaptable that P a PRS network is, this was an idea that I introduced to you this year, right? The pitch from the podium thing, and here we are. Have, having hosted the first session of Pitch from the Podium. It's beneficial both to the vendors and the audience because some of these are ancillary revenue streams that will help the practices when they go back, when they adopt these technologies. There's EHR, there's BPH, there's LHRH agonists, there's a, a, a bladder cancer, uh, low-grade uh, High, I'm sorry, high-grade, uh, non-invasive bladder cancer treatment. Uh, there was a sacral neuromodulation. Oh, gosh. Yes. Oh, post-vasectomy semen analysis. So a lot of different ve vendors were present, and we were able to talk about the tech and also, very importantly, the economic aspects or billing aspects of this these technologies. So I, th I thought that was great. It, and the audience really thought it was great as well for that being introduced. It did get a 4.5 out of five star rating. So uh, it really helped out the the attendees as well. So we had, with 75% of them giving it a, a pretty high score. So so that was really exciting. All right. Let's uh, let's end this. Let's wrap this thing up, get some final thoughts. Um, and one one final question, if you could add it into your final thought. Our audience listening to this podcast, many of them think probably that they don't need to attend the seminar because they already know this stuff. What would you say to a lot of the people that have not attended a seminar and uh, that have not had much formal training but think they're pretty good at uh, all this stuff and have this kind of nailed down? What would you say to that group? 
and then uh, and then maybe share some final thoughts. Uh, let's go around the horn. Uh, Mark, let's start with you. Sure. So um, once again, um, for me, the the overall audience interaction and where the seminar provides value um, for both me and the audience is, is hearing everything related to the topics that we bring up. Um, it, it's always something new and it's, there's always something nuanced that we pick up going forward. And, and, you know, I do this around the country a lot. Um, I, t I have a, a number of talks that I do all the time. And I can tell you um, that interactions in groups like this um, are invaluable to, uh, to me and to everyone else. I'm, you know, I know this stuff um, backwards and forwards. And yet um, I, I still learn um, as I go through this. It is a co constant improvement process because the rules definitely get tweaked. The game gets played a little bit differently. Nobody's stagnant in how they approach this because we all know that the, the U.S. healthcare system is not working the way it should. I mean, that's the bottom line. But it is the system we're in, and we have to learn how to deal with it. And so ultimately, I would say that there anybody who thinks they know everything um, and don't really need improvements it is... You know that's 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 not the way to go through life for me. I'm a I have a lifelong learner. I appreciate all of those insights and different attempts to do different things, and and the questions that come out of that are are invaluable to discuss and and in a group setting. So it's there's there's a lot that you can learn and and certainly living in a in the the same old same old is is not for me that exciting. So hopefully everybody uh, got the same out of it as, as I did. So even you, the probably one, the greatest, one, one of the greatest, if not the greatest meta urology coder on the planet, learn from the information that was presented, learn something new. I mean, that, that should tell you something. Uh, okay, Ray, final thoughts. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> that goes for the beginning coder, the certified coder who uh, may know the rules but may not understand the concepts. Or, as John mentioned, he came to our seminars for years. We have other docs that are there every single year. And they always say they learn enough new stuff to pay for their trip. So uh, we'll see you in New Orleans. <laughs> All right. John, we'll give the last word to you. You think you know what you know, but do you really know what you know? There is a difference between simply reading something like HR 1784 final, the final rule for the physician fee schedule for 2024, there, there's reading that document, that 2000 page document versus understanding it. And more importantly, how do you apply it? And that takes experience in under, not just understanding the document, but understanding the context in which that document was constructed, knowing the history of CMS and how they come out with the new rules and regs. Case in point, G2211. This is going to be huge for urology practices and those practices that understand it, implement it to their advantage. And those, and, and those are the practices that, that are going to survive and thrive despite the 3.36% decrease in conversion factor. And that is why I think attending these courses is so valuable. Many years ago, when I was, I would just attend as an audience member, I would attend exactly what you said, Scott. I would attend because the information, the incremental information that I would learn would be so invaluable. In addition, it reinforced what I already knew. So I would be in compliance with the regs that are constantly changing, the rules, the nuance of the rules that are constantly changing. 
And that's why I would attend. All right. Well, we hope to see everybody in New Orleans. You can sign up at prsnetwork.com forward slash 174 for episode 174, or just go to prsnetwork.com. And on the front uh, homepage there, there's a seminar registration button. Love to see you all in New Orleans. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank Mod Med for supporting this episode. If you're in the market for a new EHR or practice management system, we encourage you to check out ModMed at modmed.com forward slash PRS network. They do have some specials for our listening audience. That's all for today. Take us out, John. And as always, I thank you all so much for the privilege of your time. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other. Happy coding. <laughs>